Hello and welcome to EB Register. My mission is to document every Ibanez guitar ever made. But today I'm not talking about guitars. Today I'm talking about tremolo bridges and specifically about five most common bridges from the Ibanez Edge family. The Edge family of bridges is implementation of the Floyd Rose patent. Floyd Rose type of bridges are double locking floating tremolos. So what does it mean? Double locking means that the strings are locked into two places. First is the locking nut with the locking pads, which is quintessential part of the whole system. And the second part are the saddles uh, and the string blocks in the saddles of the bridge. This way strings are very well locked and if they do not stretch, they provide very good steering stability. And floating means it's not tied to the body in a solid way. It just supports its uh, knife edges, so the sharp parts here uh, on the studs that are screwed into the body and it's balanced on the string extension on one side and springs that are in the back of the body on the other side. So it's basically just floating on those studs and if the balance is set up correctly it keeps in tune. The first bridge of the family was Ibanez Edge introduced in 1986. Uh, first guitar models equipped with it didn't have like a proper routing, they were kind of surface mounted. And you can see both in RG410 that I showed in one of the first video on my channel and the Destroy DG350 I showed in previous video. In 1987, uh, with the introduction of the Gem series and RG550, they also introduced the root for the bridge that you can sunk it into the body and hence have a lower action and also more ability to movement because the bridge can now also pull back quite a lot and allow you to not only pitch down, but also pitch up. The same year it also introduces the locking studs that allow you to prevent it from moving up or down when using, which even further increases the stability of the system. Edge compared to uh, the original Floyd Rose has a bit more rounded edges over the saddles. It also has replaceable knife edges, more mass in the block for the better sustain and uh, pop in arm. In 1981, Ibanez introduced the Low Pro Edge. That's how the name suggests low profile version of the Edge Bridge. After introduction of the Low Pro Edge, it became the flagship model of bridges, but the original Edge it still has been used on some models of the guitars and they're also replaceable. Basically, they fit to the same route and can be replaced between guitars. All right, so let's look at Ibanez Edge and Ibanez Low Pro Edge the two tremolos I just mentioned. So let's start with the edge. You can see the knife edge here. There is a plate here that shows uh, the level of the edge and this should be level with the body. So quite often the mistake is that you level the bridge to this surface when you should actually level to this surface that uh, this plate is showing. We have saddles, that's where the strings are locked. And here are micro tuners. And what mi micro tuners do, they basically push down or up the whole saddle, basically stretching or uh, loosening the strength. This and uh, on the bottom there is a block that's made from solid metal and uh, the springs are attached here. You can either put five springs here or four and if you put three strings you can uh, screw in the uh, plate with the lock that will keep the strings in place. This uh, edge is after uh, re-release in 2010 it doesn't have the uh, license under, under Floyd Rose patent inscription. The earlier edges will have that inscription. And that's the, the new generation. It's a bit nasty because it's been used in a guitar, but you can see that uh, the biggest change in design is the lowered profile. It was obtained due to the different construction of the saddles. Basically, the micro tuners do not touch the saddle regulation screw anymore, but they uh, support this kind of tongue that's under the saddle. So, uh, if we remove the saddles, you can see that it has this additional part on the bottom that goes under the uh, tail of the bridge 
which then can be pushed by the uh, micro tuners. And this way the bridge is a bit longer, but it's much flatter. Apart from that, the bridges share the same block. It even says IBAN is edge on the low pro edge. Uh, and the same uh, socket for the arm that uses this type of arm with the uh, two plastic bushings that pop in. And if the bushings are in good condition, it usually stays in. But as the bushings get used, it will be a bit more limpy and flowing down. Oh, one more thing. You can see that a uh, license under Floydros patent inscription on this low pro edge, uh, which wasn't uh, visible on the edge I have. Both edge and low pro edge are considered like a high end bridges. So in the most, on the best guitars. In the meantime, in the early 90s, a few other designs pop up like TRS-101 and low TRS uh, that are kind of like mid-tier designs and also low TRS-2 and ILT, which are, uh, which are lower tier guitars. So ELT and TRS-101 were the high profile bridges like the original Edge and low TRS and low TRS-2 were bridges uh, with the lowered profile. Low TRS-2 is a uh, worse bridge. It's made of cheap metals and uh, can get out of tune pretty quickly. And it's very often confused with uh, low TRS, the better version that's, that's made in Japan and it's much better design. It's not as good as the uh, low pro edge, but still pretty good. There's also Edge-2 bridge, was very short lived in 1988. It's a single locking tremolo. The strings are only locked on the blocks in the tremolo unit and it doesn't have the locking nut. It doesn't have also micro tuners. It was only seen in some Vinnie Moore uh, signature guitars and uh, basically disappeared after 1988. So uh, it's extremely rare and uh, both Edge and Low Pro Edge were discontinued in 2003. Edge made a very short comeback in 2007 for uh, 20 anniversary guitars, uh, but they came back to all regular offer in 2010. And as of uh, 2020, they're both used in the most high-end guitars made in Japan. So I prefer the low profile edge because it's better for palm muting in my opinion. So which one of those is your favorite? Just uh, comment and tell me why. I want to uh, have better understanding. In 2003, the new generation of bridges appeared and they were called Edge Pro for the higher end and Edge Pro 2 for the lower end. So the Edge Pro is, was supposed to replace the bridges like the Edge and Low Pro Edge, the both I to told you about. And Edge Pro 2 was on the lower end of the spectrum and it was supposed to replace Low TRS and Low TRS 2 bridges. And I think especially over Low, low TRS 2 it was a huge upgrade because it was a much more stable bridge with much more high quality components and I would call it mid-tier bridge to be honest. They are mutually replaceable, they fit the same stats and the same roots. So for example in my RG370B I upgraded the Edge Pro 2 with the better Edge Pro. They are visually quite similar and hence easy to confuse but two very characteristic things to uh, differentiate them is the saddles. The Edge Pro saddles have something called sound chip. It's a piece of metal that apparently increases the sustain or something like that. Another difference is the arm socket. The Edge Pro uh, have the arm socket from the Edge and Low Pro Edge that takes the uh, arm with the bushings. And the uh, Edge Pro 2 has a different system where you just uh, push the arm in and tight the little screw here and uh, after the time this screw will go into the arm and damage it so I used like a piece of tape to make it tight but it's not a very good system. Edge Pro, the higher end bridge, was put in Japanese made guitars and Edge Pro 2 was put in Korean and uh, some Indonesian guitars. One thing characteristic for both Edge Pro and Edge Pro 2 is that they have string kind of sockets so you don't have to cut out the ball ends to put strings in and also there is no way to lose the locking blocks in the saddles as you can do in the previous bridges. Edge Pro 2 was relatively short-lived and it was phased out in 2007. My bet is 
because it was too expensive design and they came up with Edge 3, which is kind of like a, a bit different, cheaper version of the lower end bridge. So now you can see confusion because we have Edge Pro and Edge Pro 2 and another bridge in that, what I consider this family, instead of being called Edge Pro 3, is called Edge 3, which suggests that for marketing reasons that it's better because it's from the original Edge family. Edge Pro family is also considered low profile bridges like Low Pro Edge and Edge 3 is not as low profile because the micro tuners go up in the back like in the Edge so maybe that's why you went with the name but I still think it's confusing. So a few things characteristic for the Edge 3 are the raised back similar to uh, Edge Bridge the original one and because of that the saddles go a bit up so you can see like they're not flat like in Edge Pro and Edge Pro 2, especially this, the string locking screws. You also use the old system with the blocks and it doesn't have the uh, plastic sockets for the strings. So you have to actually cut out the ball ends like in the old systems. The arm system it used is similar to the Edge Pro 2. So basically stick in and tighten the screw in the back. The saddles are, are similar to an the low pro edge, so they have this kind of tongue sticking out in the back. But even with that, they didn't manage to have the lowered profile, so that's interesting. So if I put them three against each other, the, the edge pro is the highest end, put in Japanese guitar. The edge pro two is, uh, I would say, mid tier, and the edge three is the kind of lowest tier. It has pretty unfavorable reviews and I think it's because the knife edges are made from softer metal so after some time of abuse they just get less stable. But if properly set up they're quite decent bridges. I think some people are too quick to complain about them. But in, in general even the highest end model Edge Pro it was considered by many people the downgrade from the Edge, a low pro Edge family. And one of the reasons that people give for that it doesn't have a locking stat. For me personally Edge Pro uh, stands equal with low pro edge as the two best bridges Ibanez ever made. Edge Pro was phased out in 2010 as Ibanez came back to the original designs of the edge and low pro edge in the highest end guitars. Also a new series of bridges, there are two versions higher end edge zero and lower end edge zero two, started showing up in guitars and they they're living currently in parallel with the reintroduced edge and low pro edge. They support zero point system, which kind of makes them a bit different bridges. You can remove zero point system to keep them being the normal floating bridges. They're easier to set up and balance, but they also don't flow so nicely as the original systems. I'm going to talk about those bridges in a separate video because they're quite a different system. So yeah, Edge Pro and Edge Pro 2 phased out in 2010. Edge 3 stayed on the cheaper guitars until 2008. 18 or something like that and it's been replaced with the standard double locking tremolo SDL. On Indonesian guitars you quite often will have Edge 02 now and on the Japanese guitars you will have either Edge or Low Pro Edge or the Edge 0. So <clears throat> let's talk about some funky modification to those bridges. First of all 7 string version. The Edge even though very short leaf and also Low Pro Edge had the 7 string version. There was 7 string version of the low TRS, the mid tier bridge that I didn't show today but I just mentioned it. There was 7 string version of the Edge Pro. There is also concept of bridges in, equipped with piezo saddles. So they have uh, two outputs for the guitar, both like the normal output from the pickup and the piezo output for like the semi acoustic sound. There was a uh, Edge bridge equipped with uh, piezo saddles, it was called the Double Edge. It was a low pro bridge equipped with the piezo saddles, it was called double low pro edge. And there was edge pro equipped with piezo saddles that was called double edge pro. And another funkiness, both low pro edge and edge 3 have fixed version. Basically where instead of knife edges, the base plate is screwed into the body and then uh, it, it just uses saddles from those bridges and the micro tuners. The fixed edge 3 was visible on, on the Mick Thompson model I talked about uh, in one of the previous episodes. Fixed uh, low pro edge is on the Mick Thompson higher end signature that I will talk in some of the future episodes. And if I did that video already, 
when you're watching it, I'm going to put a card here, so you can click that. Cool. Hopefully this video will help you recognize between those tremolos and have a better understanding of the naming, which is, in my opinion is quite inconsistent. Uh, please comment which of those tremolos your favorite and why. Uh, please subscribe and like this video so we can uh, continue this journey to document every Ibanez guitar ever made. Thank you and see you next time.